Hey everyone, it's Adam Farkas. Welcome to another ODWire webinar. And tonight we have got a webinar for you all about one day lenses and trying to get your patients into that modality. Um, little, some ground rules before we start and I introduce our speaker tonight. On the right side of your screen, as you all know, you'll see a box um, that says questions. If you type questions into that box as the talk goes on, I'll collect all of them and at the very end, I'll ask your questions. We'll have a little back and forth Q&A. The second question I know that all of you are wondering about is the iPad mini. <laughs> right? So the iPad mini giveaway. So what we're going to do tonight is at the very end of the show, um, if we have any spare time left, I'm going to actually do the drawing in real time, generate a random number and, and pull the name out of the hat. Um, if we run out of time, then obviously I'll, I'll announce it on the site tomorrow. So that said, um, one day lenses. So tonight we're actually very fortunate to have Dr. Jay Mishu from uh, Poway, California, so I guess just outside of San Diego. Um, and Jay specializes in the management of eye disease, sports vision, and the fitting of specialty contact lenses. And on two occasions, not one but two, uh, San Diego Magazine named him one of San Diego's top doctors, so kudos. <laughs> um, and so Dr. Mishu is uh, going to tell us all about how he actually uses one-day lenses in his practice and how he's sort of gotten his patients to, uh, to make the switch. So feel free as the talk goes on uh, to ask him questions all about it. And so with that said, Dr. Mishu, take it away. Well, thank you, Adam. And uh, thanks to all the docs for joining us this evening. Uh, I know I'm up against some pretty stiff competition tonight. Adam put me head to head with the finale of Dancing with the Stars. Oops. So you doctors are certainly com commended for your dedication to the profession. Your sacrifice is duly noted. And thanks to Cooper Vision for inviting me to speak on this topic of daily disposable lenses, a modality that I have become very passionate about. I have certainly embraced these lenses wholeheartedly these last couple of years to the benefit of both my patients and my practice, and I'm excited to be able to share with you some of the things that I've learned along the way. And so a quick overview of where we're going. That's yeah, right there. Oh. There you go. So, okay, sorry about that. So a quick overview of what we're talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about both the uh, history of daily disposable lenses as well as where the marketplace for this modality is right now. And we're going to be talking about why doctors should be prescribing these lenses as well as the common barriers we get from patients. And then finally, we're going to talk about the future of the contact lens market and how daily disposables will fit into it. So first off, a snapshot of the contact lens market right now. So this data is from 2012 and represents data that is industry-wide, not just Cooper products. So of all the contact lens wearers out there, 17% are wearing daily disposables. And this segment of the market grew 14% from the previous year, making it the fastest growing piece of the pie. So this is clearly where all the action is right now. So these numbers um, beg the question. Why the sudden burst of interest in this modality? Are they just the newest innovations in contacts and people tend to gravitate toward, toward the new? Well, um, I came across this interesting study in the literature, and what was most surprising to me was the date. If you look at that, 1996. I was still a wide-eyed third-year optometry student back then, so daily disposables are certainly not new. We've had them available for many, many years. But having said that, it's been only in the last few years that they've really gained traction in the marketplace. So the question is, why now? And I bet we could all throw out some answers to this question. Um, I've listed a few of my thoughts here, but the bottom line is this. When we think about the major problems and challenges that we uh, all face as contact lens practitioners in our practices, um, I believe the best solution we can offer our patients is to fit them with daily disposables. And I'm going to spend some time going through what I see as the five biggest challenges we face in our office with our contact lens patients and show you how daily disposables really are the best way around these challenges. So first is compliance. Um, so we see this patient every day, don't we? Uh, you know the one I'm talking about, the one who is wearing their two-week lenses for five weeks. Um, we've, we talk to them about stretching these lenses. They nod their head in approval that, yes, it's a bad thing, and yes, they promise to do better next year. And yet, year after year, there's really no change in behavior. It's, it's, it's human nature. Uh, you have patients who know they should be disposing of lenses more frequently, but they're willfully deciding not to, usually to save money. But you also have patients who just genuinely forget. 
so what are you going to do? Uh, you know that these people are playing with fire. Maybe they haven't had any problems yet, but uh, they don't see all the nasty red eyes that come into your office from contact lens abuse. So again, what can you do to protect your patients from a problem they don't fully appreciate? Well, you can switch them to daily disposable lenses. Research shows that it's by far the most compliant modality. So this slide, 94% of daily disposable lens, lens wearers are compliant, as opposed to less than 50% with the two-week modality. And remember that um, you know, compliance is not only about replacement schedules. Uh, the more serious issue is the cleaning and caring of the lenses. Uh, how many times have you seen this, the grimy lens case or the patient cleaning it with tap water? This is, this is a serious problem. Um, if you picked up the local newspaper here in my small little town uh, last month, you would have seen a front page article about a young girl in junior high who needs a corneal transplant now because of acanth amoeba. She's not my patient. I've never seen her, but she probably got it from cleaning her contacts with tap water. I mean, it's, it's really tragic. And besides the misery this is going to cause her, uh, I can't help but to think what's going to happen to her eye doctor. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this ends up in the courts. Uh, I mean, can you imagine being on the stand and having a prosecutor grill you about whether or not you warned the patient about the dangers of using tap water and why you didn't prescribe a lens that skipped the whole cleaning and storing regimen altogether? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that uh, should give you nightmares. I mean, but it can be totally avoided when you prescribe daily disposables. What you're doing is you're taking the patient and all their bad habits out of the equation. It protects you and it protects the patient from themselves. And to further illustrate this point, I mean, look at this study. This is pretty remarkable, actually. Um, it's, it is saying that when you ask patients about their contact lens compliance, 85% of them will self-report that they are compliant with their care, 85%. But in reality, only 2% showed good compliance, and only 0.4% were fully compliant. I mean, think about those stats for a minute. Let that sink in. So that, that means in a busy contact lens practice that sees maybe 50 contact lens patients per week, that means only one patient per week showed good compliance, and only one patient per month, month, will exhibit full compliance. I mean, this is pretty discouraging. Uh, so, but again, it points us to the need to switch our patients into a daily disposable lens. It's protecting your patient from their own bad habits. And another um, issue that we deal with in our practices is this issue of solution and lens incompatibility. And related to it is the ocular sensitivities that some patients have to the various disinfectants and preservatives found in contact lens solution. While these tend to be pretty easily fixed with a change in solution or lens, it again just begs the question, isn't the best solution no solution? Why not eliminate these problems from the patient from the outset and eliminate the wasted share time of having the patient come back for a follow-up visit and just have them you know, fit with the new lens that doesn't require the use of cleaning solutions? Now, this, this third big issue we deal with relates pretty closely to the compliance issue we discussed earlier, but microbial contamination is a concern with reusable lenses. If, if if it's true that only one patient in 200 is correctly caring for their lenses, um, then that means the other 199 are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, swimming, hot tubs, you know, wa not washing their hands, rubbing their eyes with dirty hands. I mean, all these things can introduce microbial contamination to the lenses. And since we already know that the vast majority of our patients don't clean their lenses well enough, these microbes are given the opportunity to, to incubate in the lens and cases and can cause all sorts of problems. So again, why wouldn't you minimize this problem and give your patients a fresh, clean, new lens every day? <clears throat> now this next slide is a bit busy, but um, it summarizes the results of a study done through the Henry Ford Health System in Michigan. And they asked the question, what is the incidence of adverse corneal events, aka keratitis, among the various contact lens uh, materials and modalities that are on the market? Is there a correlation between the modality a patient is in and the likelihood of them getting a keratitis? Uh, the, the results, I think, are pretty illuminating. I mean, if you look at the middle column here at the bottom, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but um, <clears throat> the lowest rate was with the OMA Philcon A60%. It barely registers at a rate of 1.2 adverse events per thousand patients wearing it. Many of the lenses commonly fit have rates above 20 per thousand. And leading the pack is low trifilcon A with a whopping 27.8 adverse events per thousand. So what can you say about this thing? Well, um, I think the basic conclusion I make from this study is that among all the lenses that were looked at, and you can see that they included monthly lenses, two-week lenses, and daily disposables, all of them, 
the one with the lowest incidence of keratitis was the daily disposable. Uh, this next one, data, uh, it shows the same data but graphed a little bit differently, and it clearly shows that the, the choice of lens that you put your patients in does matter with regards to how likely your patients will develop a keratitis. It actually matters a lot. For those of you who don't uh, keep up on your silicons here, the uh, OMA Silicon A, 60% here at the left, is the material that ProClear One Days are made out of. The keratitis rate here is 20 times less than some of the leading two-week and monthly lenses. And now this fourth one, this is a big one for me, ocular allergies. I, I practice here in San Diego. And um, this year has really been the worst I've ever seen for allergies in all my years of practice. I mean, I walk outside every night to drive home from work, and my car has this, like, fine dusting of pollen all over it. I mean, it's, it's actually visible to the naked eye. So it's really no surprise that this stuff is coating the contacts of our, you know, my patients as well. And, you know, we know, all know the problems that allergies can cause, the itching, the tearing, the redness. It can make your life pretty miserable, and studies have shown that two out of three contact lens wears a better comfort with daily disposables over other modalities. And this shouldn't really come as any surprise to us uh, when you consider how poorly our patients are cleaning and disinfecting their reusable lenses. The allergens never really get cleaned off the lens, and the next day they are put right back on the eye, causing this vicious cycle. So daily disposables, uh, again, are a way to break the cycle and ensure that your patient has a fresh, allergen-free lens on the eye every day. So in my, in my mind, at least, um, the jury is no longer still deliberating on this one, guys. I mean, the verdict is in. The daily disposals are the best solution for the big contact lens problems that we face in our clinics. Uh, they provide the highest level of compliance. You eliminate the need for solutions, and you greatly reduce the risk of keratitis, microbial infection, and allergic response. In addition, in addition to all the studies uh, I've shown you, I think intuitively we all knew that this would be the case. I mean, just from your own clinical experience, I think it just makes sense that if you want to give your patients the greatest chance of success in terms of contact, comfort, and safety, that, um, then daily disposables are really the way to go. So why aren't all of our patients wearing them? Well, um, I, I think we could all agree that the biggest obstacle to getting our patients into these lenses is uh, that they are perceived to be much more expensive than other options. Um, this perception is held you know, certainly by patients, but also by many doctors. Um, I know for myself that I held this belief not so long ago, uh, but I, what, what I want to do now is shift gears a bit and look at this more closely, and I think you'll see, as I did, that this is actually a false perception. So this is uh, another kind of busy slide, but it's a really important one, so I want to take some time to break it down. Uh, here we're, we're comparing two patients. The first one gets an annual supply of ProClear One Days, and the other gets an annual supply of a premium two-week lens. So both patients are getting eight boxes of lenses. So we see the doctor's cost to buy the lenses, 330, excuse me, 322 versus 162. And then after we mark them up and we sell them to the patient for 440, and 272, and most of us stop right there and say, see, the daily disposables, they're more expensive than the others. You know, I might have a few patients that will go for it, but most of them are going to opt for the cheaper lenses. This is exactly how I used to think, and as a result, when I was presenting daily disposables to my patients, I would kind of present them as the, you know, Cadillac option, if you know what I mean. You know, if Mrs. Jones, if money is no object and you just have to have the best, then these are the lenses for you. And, you know, surprise, surprise, I didn't get too many patients to accept them. But let's look a little further here. I mean, the ProClear One Days have a $100 rebate when the patient buys the annual supply versus just $25 for the other lenses. And that gets the numbers a little closer, but there's still a significant gap. Um, but when you think about the total expense to the patient over the year, you really do have to think, you have to include a solution cost as well. And if you have ever walked down the eye care aisle of your local drugstore, you know this stuff isn't cheap. So really the total cost of the patient is about the same, all things considered. And as we've already discussed, um, the compliance rate with daily disposables is about twice as high as with two-week lenses. So that means that these patients are back in your chair getting exams on a yearly basis instead of every other year. And that means a much more profitable practice to you. And I can uh, you know, personally attest to this. I mean, two years ago, my daily disposable rate was about 11%. Um, that was when I started to seriously kind of look at daily disposable lenses. And then once I kind of convinced myself that it was the best option for the patient and the best option for my practice, uh, everything changed. I mean, I changed the way I present them to patients. I don't position them in my practice as the high-cost option anymore. 
I explain to them that it's, it costs about a dollar a day to wear daily disposables, which is about the same as wearing two-week lenses when you consider all the solution that you're going to need to buy. Um, I've really found that, found that phrase, one dollar a day, to be really effective. Um, people have no problem spending four bucks a day on their latte at Starbucks. So, you know, by comparison, these daily disposables are, are quite a bargain, actually. So in the two years of doing this, I've gone from 11% and I've jumped up to 26% acceptance in my practice now. Patients love the convenience, and I have the peace of mind that they're in safe lenses that they're going to be compliant with. Everybody's happy. And I see these patients more frequently. They come back at 12 months, so my schedule is full, which is kind of a nice little bonus. Now, this is another uh, helpful suggestion if you really want to be successful with daily disposables. Um, some of the old pricing equations that we have traditionally used to mark a product, um, they don't really apply to daily disposables. I think you have to kind of think differently. The patients today are very savvy, and they are definitely price shopping you against online retailers and big box stores. So you have to be competitive. Um, I have patients who will actually get on their smartphones right in my office and pull up one in their contacts to compare their prices to what we're charging in the office. Uh, you know, I used to be shocked by this uh, brazen behavior, but uh, patients just don't see it that way, and they really have no problem doing it right in front of you. So, you know, be prepared. Um, I actually find that the best way to combat this is to publish the prices of 1-800-CONTACTS. I actually have a laminated sheet with all the commonly prescribed lenses. I list their price, and I list my price. And I have my staff update this list every three months. So when it comes time to write up these contact lens orders, I, the staff brings out the sheet and preemptively shows the patient that they're getting a great deal on the lenses. You know, no smoke and mirrors. So my whole paradigm on contact lenses has changed from when I first got out of optometry school. There was a time when selling contact lenses was a big profit center. Um, you know, but for good or bad, those, I think those days are gone. Contacts are now seen much more as a commodity rather than the medical devices that they are. So uh, you know, instead of marking up my contacts a lot, I stay very competitive on box price. But to make up for it, I also charge a lot more for my fitting services. So I mean, the net net for me has actually been very positive. I will discount the product I sell to stay competitive, but I will not discount my professional training and years of experience, and neither should you. Um, that is something optometry has that nobody else has, and we should never be discounting that. So I think this paradigm shift from I make money by selling contacts into I make money by fitting contacts is key and is something more OD should embrace. Um, you will actually make a lot more money and be seen as more of the professional that you are. So this uh, slide illustrates another benefit to fitting contacts, I mean, fitting daily disposables that I did not anticipate but have been very pleasantly surprised by. If it, it has actually been a pretty consistent referral source. Um, people love the convenience of these lenses. People with allergies love the comfort of these lenses. And guess what? They end up telling their friends and family about it. So um, you know, now that I'm about two years into really embracing this modality, I get patients coming in asking for them. Um, this is why they, this is what they want. This is actually the reason they came to see me. Uh, their previous OD was fitting them with two-week disposables, but they heard from a coworker that I believe in these daily disposables, and you know, now they're in my chair and not his. So um, another strategy I've used with great success to get my numbers up to this 26% is that I'm looking for opportunities to give patients free samples of these lenses. I mean, I, I literally give them out like candy on Halloween. No joke. So, I mean, as you're talking with patients, there's lots of open doors you can use you can use to get a few pairs in their hands, you know. So, oh, so you're going camping this summer? Here, take five pairs of these daily disposables. How about, oh, you're traveling overseas for business? Here, take a few pairs of these daily disposables. The TSA is going to confiscate your bottle of solution anyway. Or how about, oh, your daughter's getting married next month. Here, take a couple pairs of daily disposables with you. One less thing to think about. It's, it's really easy. I mean, nobody turns down free. And they start to sell themselves. People love the convenience. And if you can just get them to wear them for a little while, uh, you'll, you'll get a lot of conversion. Um, I also have a lot of patients who aren't totally ready to make the switch and use both reusable and daily disposable lenses. You know, they get a box or two of these daily disposables for stuff like, you know, surfing I'm in San Diego and traveling, but use monthly lenses for everything else. I think the time, I think with time, they'll switch over completely to daily disposables. So the question becomes, you know, which daily disposable should I be fitting? Um, there are quite a few choices out there, so I'd like to spend a little time with you guys about a lens uh, that I've really had a lot of success with, and that's the uh, ProClear One Day. So what makes this lens so unique? 
Well, for one, it utilizes what Cooper calls PC hydration technology. I, I learned that the PC actually stands for phosphocholine, not proglyr. And I won't go into a chemistry lecture here, but basically the take home here is that it mimics substances that are naturally found in your eye. So it is seen by your eye as you know, biocompatible. And we all know that the number one complaint among contact lens wearers is poor end of day comfort. Um, I certainly hear some variation of this every day in my clinic. You know, doc, I would love to wear my lenses all day long, but I have to take them out after six hours because they start to bother me. So what I, what I like about these ProClear One Days is that this is the issue they really went after. And I, I, I think they designed a lens that um, uh, this does a really great job at locking in moisture for the full day and giving the patients a full, comfortable day of wearing lenses. They did an interesting side-by-side uh, -side comparison with the other one days on the market with regard to their hydration levels over time. And uh, here's the test conditions. You can read them for yourself. But I, I think the pictures are going to really tell the story here. So let me just move on to that. So if you look at these lenses, the top row are the lenses when they come out of the package. And then the bottom show the same lenses after 20 minutes. So uh, if you look at the first three lenses, um, after 20 minutes, I mean, look at these things. They look like potato chips. Uh, you wouldn't dream of putting any one of them on an eye. And the fourth one there, the BioTrue One Day, is interesting uh, because the lens looks pretty good. But um, if you look a little closer at it, the whole lens has actually shrunk. The diameter has become much smaller. In contrast to those other four, uh, the ProClear One Day looks pretty much unchanged. It's retained the moisture well and kept its shape and size. So after 20 minutes, um, only one lens really bears any resemblance to what it looked like coming out of the package. It was the ProClear One Day. And uh, you know, ProClear now has a one day multifocal lens, which is really an interesting product in my opinion. Uh, we have already talked about how daily disposable lenses are the fastest growing segment in the contact lens market. Um, well, multifocal is the other category that is showing big, big gains. So with this lens, you're combining the two hottest areas of growth in contact lenses. And with the uh, demographics of our society, you're certainly pointing to the fact that there are going to be more and more presbyopes. And we all know that there's a strong correlation between advancing age and ocular dryness. So there, there was no doubt that we're going to see an increasing number of patients who are going to need a multifocal lens that performs well in a drier eye. And if they're already in a daily disposable lens and love them, uh, why would you want to switch them back to a two or four week lens? You really wouldn't. I mean, you'd want to keep them, keep the continuity and have them transition into a one day multifocal. From a performance point of view, it really is the best option. Uh, you get the great vision at all distances while maintaining binocularity. It's much easier to adapt to than monovision, and all this in the comfort and convenience of a daily disposable lens. Now, it's uh, designed in kind of a unique way that I think is uh, worth looking at a little bit closer to help us understand why it works so well. It, uh, so it has a center near aspheric design and is designed with a single power profile. So the ad is always plus one in this lens. So clinically, I find this combination to be pretty effective in giving my patients an uncompromised natural feel to their vision. For higher ads, you give a small boost to the non-dominant eye, which is enough to give the patient great intermediate near vision, but not so much as to compromise binocularity. So of course, uh, Cooper has come out with a uh, nifty little uh, fitting guide for the lens. Now, um, I don't know about you, but I used to fight against these things. Um, I resented the idea that an engineer who hadn't even seen or talked to my patient so was going to tell me what lens to pick. Now, you know, maybe I still do resent it a little bit, but I have to admit that they do a pretty darn good job at predicting what lens will work best. So it used to take me several visits to kind of fine-tune the prescription before I got the final, X, final RX. Now, you know, more times than not, it's a bullseye with the first lens I try. Uh, the only clinical tip I can pass on to you as someone who's fit a bunch of these is that it's real easy to push plus to the dominant eye, actually, after you put the lenses on. So uh, you can do it oftentimes without blurring the distance vision. And of course, it's great for intermediate and near and for maintaining binocularity. The chair time that has saved me is really tremendous. And uh, 
I mean, let's be honest, as much as our patients like us, uh, they don't want to be coming back week after week to tweak their contacts and tell them things are just right. I mean, they've got to get on with their lives as well. So, so my advice is stick to the fitting guide. It really does work well. Now, we talked about the OMA Philcon A material previously with regards to its extremely low rates of keratitis. Um, now, the ProClear One Day Multifocal is made out of the same stuff, so your patients can expect the same comfortable lens wearing experience, and you can rest easy knowing that they're in a very safe lens. So, in fact, the FDA was so impressed with the OMA Philcon A 60% that they allow the claim may provide improved comfort for contact lens wearers who experience mild discomfort or symptoms relating to dryness during contact lens wear. And I think you'll find that these aren't just marketing claims. You'll see the results for yourself. And when, when asked head to head, do patients prefer their ProClear one day multifocals to their old lenses? Uh, you can expect about two out of three of them to prefer ProClear with regards to both vision and comfort. And, you know, again, from the perspective of marketing your practice, this lens is really dynamite. Um, I find that not too many ODs are fitting daily disposable multifocal lenses yet. And so this has been a great way to, it's a great way to differentiate yourself from your competition. And, you know, you need to be doing something different than the OD down the street. And I, I think 2013 really is the window of opportunity for this lens. You can get it now before everyone starts fitting it. It's well worth becoming an early adopter of this technology. Um, it's really... It's really a great lens that to make you look like a hero to your patient. So you'll find it to be a really great source of referrals for your practice. And this kind of dovetails um, into your online reputation. I mean, I'm sure you're all aware of these rating sites out there. I'm proud to say that I've you know, gotten many five-star reviews, but it's worth noting that my first five-star rating on Yelp was from a patient who had uh, seen four different doctors in the last five years and was thrilled that she finally found someone who gave her the option to go with the ProClear One Day Multifocal Lenses. So I think you can uh, ex expect similar um, positive experience with the lens, too. So Adam, I think with that, I'm going to hand it back to you, and uh, maybe you can uh, update us on the dancing. All righty. Well, thanks, Jay. And uh, yeah, thanks. I think I think what we're going to do now is uh, we have a whole bunch of questions coming in, so we're going to grill you. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, I think... You know, a lot of people have actually tried to make the switch to, to get their patients into this modality, and it sounds like over two years you've been able to do it. So um, yeah. a couple of people are providing their feedback here, and then I'll bounce these off of you, and you can tell me what you think. So the first okay. person says, my experience has been the more lenses the patient has to buy, the more likely they become price shoppers um, and want to buy their lenses elsewhere. How do you keep the daily lens patient, patients from not becoming an Internet shopper? Well, I, I, I do match internet pricing. So 100 contacts, like I said, I've got a you know, little spreadsheet right in my office, laminated. Competitive on box price. I, I think that's a true statement that the more lenses, people are even more um, willing to go online to buy their the lens. So you basically have to give them a reason to stay with you. So, I mean, Cooper's very good about the rebates, and the rebates can only be used with you on the day of the exam. So, if you match 1-800 contacts on box price and you have a rebate, um, I find you can retain these patients pretty easily. And the rebates are only good for the day of the exam, so this is actually part of the mechanism that you use to get people to, to buy with you? Absolutely. Great. Um, so a question here, since daily disposables are seen as more expensive, how do you convince an already non-compliant patient who's trying to stretch their dollar not to use daily disposable lenses like they might with their current lenses. Yeah, this is a challenge, um, especially the people that are abusing their lenses but haven't had any real bad uh, consequences yet. I mean, they're playing with fire, and we all know it, but um, maybe the patient doesn't fully appreciate that. So, uh, you know, I, I like I said, I do give out a lot of samples. So even if they're they're saying, I just want the same lens I had last year, the monthly replacement, I'm going to stretch them out to two months. You know, I'll say, fine, but here, try this out, please. Just try it out and see what you think. You know, I, I, I think you just, if you get the lens on the eye, it really does start to sell itself. Right. Hmm. Here's a practical question. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So if a patient has to remove the lens during the day due to, say, a foreign body sensation, do you tell mm -hmm. them to reapply the same lens or do you just tell them to toss it and put in a new one? Uh, I... I don't really have a problem with them putting the same lens back in. I don't know if that's what everyone else does, but I, 
it, if it's only been in the eye a couple hours and they need to take it out to rinse it out, I don't have an issue with them putting it back in. Right. So question here more about your office procedure. Do you have patients return for follow-ups when you give them the daily samples before you approve uh, a, 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 an order for a year? I don't. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, one base curve, one diameter. They, they fit on the vast majority of eyes. Um, so I, I typically don't. And, but I, I, I do tell them, of course, if there's any issues, you know, definitely come back in. I'll take a peek at it. But I haven't really had any issue with that. Right. Um, interesting question. So you mentioned there's a multifocal version of the lens. Do you charge for another mm -hmm. fitting fee if someone's moving from the, the spheric to the uh, to the multifocal version? If it's their yearly exam, yeah, I would. If they're if they've already paid for a fitting and right. you know, three months later they decide they want to do the multifocal, I might charge a little bit of a difference there because it is you know slightly more complicated fit, but I wouldn't charge the full thing. Right. Now, what's your experience, actually? I'm really curious between the two lenses and, and how they fit. Uh, I mean, they, between the the one day and the one day multifocal. Yeah, if you have someone who's in the plain old one day and and you want to try them yeah. in the multifocal, does it feel pretty much the same? It does. It does. I mean, the vision's a little different just because there's the multifocal feature, but as far as the comfort and the, the fit, it's pretty similar. Right. And let's see, my gosh, so many questions here. <laughs> um, so no, another practical question. I've had a couple of patients complain about the lens tearing. Have you had any experience with that? You know, they are really thin. There's no doubt. Um, so I, I do have that issue as well. Um, I have no problem replacing torn lenses. That's kind of one of part of the deal with the providing good customer service, I think. So, I mean, if, if anybody has a torn lens, or they can always call me up, call me up and I'll give them a new one. But, yeah, they are thin. Right. Uh, I think I have a, a chemistry question here, so I apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> chemistry or design? Um, what differentiates this lens as a daily lens versus the, the ProClear XC lens as a monthly lens? <laughs> I may have to defer that one to. Uh, yeah, I think I you know, know. Doug, Doug Brer from Cooper Vision may or may not still be on this call, and. I think Doug's... I Adam? Ah, Doug, you're there. I am, yes. <laughs> Great. So, Doug, do you want to try to take a crack at, at that question? Uh, as far as the differences between XC and the ProClear One Day? Correct. Yeah, there, there, is, there are differences as far as uh, general thickness of the lens and certainly the manufacturing platform that uh, certainly our monthly lenses are made on versus our, versus our daily disposables make those, those lenses um, different. From a again from a thickness and manufacturing standpoint, right. And going back to a, a similar question before uh, about the trial lenses, what's your average trial period with dailies before you actually finalize the prescription? How long will you let it go? Uh, I like five days. So the, I give them you know a strip of five for each eye typically, and then do a follow up. Right. And let's see. Huh. Someone's talking about demography here, and this is sort of an interesting question. Um, we, you know, San Diego is a pretty affluent town. Um, they're asking, you know, if you're from a, a, a neighborhood that might be lower income, is this sale going to mm -hmm. be much, much more difficult? And how would you adjust what you do? I guess this is more of a theoretical question. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I really do think they don't cost any more than the regular two-week lenses if you're wearing them. You know, really for two weeks and buying the solution and all that stuff. I mean, so I don't know that it's a big price jump. I mean, I know there's a perception that you're getting so many lenses that it must be more expensive. But I think if you can just explain to the patient that really it's it's going to come out about the same once you start buying the cases and the solution and all the stuff you're going to need for the reusable ones, and you're competitive on your box price, um, I I think you can convince people to do it. Right. Uh, question here, back to pricing, <laughs> a mm -hmm. popular topic. What do you yeah. do, price pricing wise, when you get a patient who says, "I don't want a year of these things. I just want one thirty pack." <laughs> How do yeah. you handle that situation? Yeah, yeah, I, I get that all the time, actually. Um, I mean, some people, like I, like I said, they just want to wear them for a sport, just for the softball league or whatever. So they don't want to buy a whole year's supply. So I mean, I, I'll, I'm fine selling a 30 pack. I mean, I'm still competitive on the box price. I just, you know, won't make a ton of money. But um, again, it's introducing the lens. 
And uh, I think once people wear it, they, they get kind of warm up to the idea of wearing it full time. Right. So, so you will actually match price even if the rebates aren't available because they're buying a very small quantity of the lenses? Yeah. I mean, I let them know they're not going to be able to get the rebates. So, I mean, in a sense, they're, you know, they're not going to save as much as they would, but I still do match the box price. Right. Um, question here, and again, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. <laughs> oh um, you, know, you mentioned that you keep your professional fees pretty high uh, to offset yeah. perhaps lower revenue from the contact lenses. Do you have a sense of how, where you actually are in your marketplace in terms of pricing and everyone else around you? For my fitting fees, I'm high. I do kind of call around and check. Right. And, um, and I'm totally fine with that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I... I guess the way I look at it is um, I'm really kind of selling an experience, so, you know, a customer service experience. And part of that, um, I mean, with the higher fee, you are getting some extra things that maybe you don't get with other practitioners. So, you know, the lens replacement certainly is is a no-brainer. Um, if they're going on vacation and need a, some solution, you know, a smaller size of solution, I've, I'll give that out for free. If, um, you know, one of the other things I do, and this, this this may sound a little strange, but I, I kind of sell it. I guess the, the business model I kind of think about is like car insurance premium. So when they, they pay a high fitting fee when they come see me, but uh, one of the things they get is if they ever have a red eye that's related to contact lenses, um, my promise to them is call. I'm going to get you in the same day that you call, and I'm going to see you for free hmm. if, your, if your red eye is related to contact lenses. So it's, um, they're paying a little more up front, but I'm not nickel and diming them down the road. So um, so if everyone's paying a little extra, you don't. I don't mind seeing a few extra red eyes for free because you know, uh, I guess you know, the car premium kind of analogy works. That if everyone's kind of paying a little, um, if you're the person that has the red eye and needs the care, um, you're not going to get charged by me. So right. I kind of present it that way, and that seems to be pretty effective. So here's here's the the million dollar question in terms of practice management. Does your staff right. play Does your staff play an active role in this and the way you present things? Well, I'm presenting it in the exam room, um, but um, certainly there's a script. There, part of the script is theirs as well. So when I pass off the patient to uh, my optician, um, I kind of review the case with uh, my optician. We have some some code words if I kind of you know if I kind of get a sense that they're really price conscious or they're going to go online or something like that. So if I mention one of those words, the staff knows to bring out the the laminated sheet showing that we match prices with 1-800-CONTACTS, plus we have the rebate, you know, plus we have all these little guarantees with you know, ripped lenses and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, they do, do play a role in this, and I kind of tip them off when they need to kind of, um, you know, go to the script. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here, here's an unpleasant question, but an interesting one. How do you deal mm -hmm. with the patient who actually does wear these lenses for weeks at a time? <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, there's some people that are just, no matter what lens you put them in, they're going to stretch it. So, they, you know, they are so thin that I find that people, it's really hard to do that. I mean, after even a couple of days, they're going to start to, to break and split on you. So um, that's actually one of the positives, being so thin, is that they, it's really hard to stretch them out. Right. But, I mean, people are going to do what they're going to do. You can't control everything. Right. Um. Other question, actually, this is an interesting one. Um, since you're moving your practice to sort of a, a one-day a one -day modality, and that's what you're trying to do, are there any other kinds of one-day lenses that you fit? Uh, well, I fit the Torx a lot, and uh, again, with success. So I do spherical, Torx, and um, multifocal, all three. So I think that you know, it covers so many, so many of your patients that uh, you really have an option or an opportunity with uh, the vast majority of the people that walk in your office. Um, is that the question, or do you mean other brands? Uh, I, I, I don't know. They didn't specify. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, well, it's actually sort of interesting. In the talks that we've had before, it sounds like what most people do is they try to pick a favorite brand and then really stock their office w with as many of the trials as they can and as many samples as yeah. they can. Is that sort of the approach yeah. that you take? It is, yeah. So I do um, have samples of the ProClear One Days and the Focus Daily. So those are the, the – ProClear is my first choice. If that's not working, then I go to the Focus. Right. I don't really care for the Acuvue product that much, so I, I don't stock that. I mean, for the future, I mean, that kind of brings up an interesting point. I haven't done it yet, but I'm kind of strongly considering it. Um, I've done it with um, monthly lenses as I inventory them here. So with the monthlies, I if, if I fit a monthly lens, I 
they leave with the eight, you know, the four boxes of lenses as they leave the clinic. So there's no opportunity really there for um, them to go online. So I've, I've kicked around the idea of doing that with the dailies. It just uh, takes up a lot of space. But I, I think that would bump up the rate even higher if, you, if they could just walk out with the lenses in their hand. Right. And I apologize for this next question about optics. <laughs> can you go over? Can you go over how they figured out the near boost for the multifocal lens? Well, basically, I mean, the lens has a one diopter add. It's fixed. So no matter what lens in the multifocal you pick, it's always got a one diopter add. So if the patient has, you know, a 175 add, the near boost needs to make up that difference. So it's it's basically the add minus the one that's in the in the lens itself. So that's the near boost. It's the right. difference between the one and the patient's true ad. And, and do you find just by having that, that one lens available at that one ad, it, it's okay? It's not sort of hindering your flexibility when fitting the lens? You know, I, I had that concern at first, but um, it seems to work really well. Um, even though they're all near center with one ad, and I uh, think that might limit you a little bit, uh, the binocularity works really well, and the, even with the near boost, it's not like it's not like a regular monovision fit where you do lose the binocularity. This uh, maintains it, so I've I've found it to be pleasantly uh, pleasantly surprised, I'd say. Great, and another science question here: uh, Do you find that okay. the rates of GPC in your office are lower with the one-day lenses? So giant papillary conjunctivitis yeah. for everyone out there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't have hard figures, but I don't see it very often anymore. Right. Okay, so let's see if I can find another challenging question for you. Ah, so here's here's a challenging one. Can you predict the future? <laughs> so what what do you see over the horizon for uh, one day silicone lenses? Do you think this is going to be something that becomes popular? I do. Yeah. I think. Um, I mean, certainly in reusable lenses, silicone is the way to go. It's the it's the best material out there. So I think it's really just a matter of time before someone comes up with that lens. Right. Okay, and let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many different ones. I'm reading down this list. This is why it's taking <laughs> taking me a while. My goodness. Okay. Huh. This is an, an interesting question. Um, uh, you mentioned that you might discount a primary care visit that you can bill to insurance. Um, yeah. And so. <laughs> The comment is free visits imply no value or intellectual property. Huh. I, you know, I, I guess I see it a little differently in the sense that I am charging them up front during the fitting fee, which, like I said, mine is, is higher than most. And so, in a sense, they're kind of they're paying for it up front rather than charging them throughout the year for you know different things. I prefer, you know, one one time where they pay, and then the rest is just good customer service. So. I mean, I, I kind of see where that comment's coming from, but um, I don't see it. I, I don't know. I guess I see it differently. I think my patients do, too, that they're not seeing it as no value, but they're seeing it as a doctor who cares and wants to get their eye fixed. Right. Uh, another question here about pr uh, pricing and price points. The, you had a graph up, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how far back it was. Um, it didn't look like it included monthly replacements on it. Um, do you have a sense of if, that, if, if it was included, what that, what that would look like? Which slide do I am not sure. <laughs> we'll keep going and see if we can find it. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see if it's back here. Oh, there we Say go. It again. Yep, right this there. One? You, oh, you got oh, oh. it. Um, you're right. I don't have a monthly lens there. I think it would come out uh, very close to the two week, though. Right. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, plug your own numbers. I mean, it's not uh, rocket science. Right, because I think a lot, a lot of folks are actually going to try to move people from from the monthly modality to one day. So this is probably even more uh -huh. germane to them than the, than the two week. Okay. And so that's that's the feedback that I'm getting here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think the numbers are going to work out very similar to the two week, but um, you know, certainly pull out your invoices and plug your own numbers in and prove it to yourself. Right. Um, ah, it's basically mean that the rebates and the solution costs are still there, so that's the real that's the real kicker. 
Right. So um, product question here. Um, how is the mm -hmm. design of the ProClear One Day Multifocal um, different from the design of the N lenses for Biofinity? So I guess the question is, if you're familiar with fitting Cooper's other lenses, how does this one differ? Yeah. Um, and maybe Doug can answer more, but I mean, it's um, it's an aspheric design, and you don't have, I mean, they're all near near center, and they're all at the one add. Um, but if, if you had a near center one add um, by affinity multifocal, how is it different? Uh, well, the 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 polymer is certainly different, but as far as the design of the lens, um, I'd probably defer that to Doug again as well. So Doug, are you still there? Am I still muted or? Uh, nope, you're you're live. All right, good. Yeah, the uh, the the the, the difference is um, both lenses obviously are a, are a center near uh, multifocal lens. The difference is with the ProClear One Day multi multifocal, it's a full aspheric lens, whereas with ProClear multifocal, it's a center near spherical, with uh, and the intermediate zone is aspheric. So those are the primary differences between the two. Great. And uh, interesting comment here and something to think about. We, we mentioned uh, silicone one-day lens is coming, but <laughs> we have a person here who says they won't fit them um, because they're not that useful. Why would you actually want to use them? It will only encourage people to sleep in them. <laughs> hmm. So, so he, he won't fit a one-day Silicon, oh, silicon, yeah, because the idea, I guess the idea being if it's so comfortable and people are going to start sleeping with them. Huh. <laughs> well, um, I mean, these ProClear Wendy's are pretty comfortable, too. I don't, I haven't experienced people sleeping in them. At least they don't tell me that. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I have a, a sense of that happening or not, but I, I, I kind of don't think it will happen. Right. All right. And let's see. So... Um, comment here, even if you are higher in your fitting fees, don't you find yourself mm -hmm. discounting um, most of it because vision insurance will reimburse 40 or $50 only for a standard fit? Huh. Um, so, I mean, you still can charge them the delta usually. So, I mean, if they use up their benefits and it all gets swallowed up by the fit and there's still more. I, a lot of vision plans will let you bill for the, the remainder there. Right, and you find that your patient population has been okay with that? I have. I find that they, they, um, they, um, very, uh, they, they price me out on the boxes, but as far as fitting, uh, they, I'm not uh, scrutinized as much. Right. Uh, question here, another practical question. Do you prefer a silicone lens over a certain power, like, say, negative 4? So if you have a very high um, minus well, lens, what do you, them, yeah. what do you I mean, tend to do? Yeah, that, that's that's the big question, I guess. For these monthly and two-week lenses, I fit silicon hydrolyte gel on, you know, most powers, not just the higher ones. I just think it's a, a better way to go, safer, more breathable lens. Right. Okay, so let's see. I think these are all of the, the general questions. So last licks, anyone, if you have a general sort of question. Um, and I'm going to hold off, actually, on some of the more... Um, specific ones and, and put those up on, on OD wire. I guess one question, um, is it, would it be possible to actually get a PDF copy of any of these slides? <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so if we can actually get at least some of them, we can, we can put them up on OD wire where, where we'll be talking about this. Um, this webinar is actually going to be archived up on the site probably within the next couple of days. Um, so if you want to come back and watch it again, you can, you can watch it there too. Um, and we'll see what we can do about getting the slides up there as well. Um, so I guess, ah, oh my gosh. So all of a sudden, as I'm looking at this, five more questions come in. So if you're up for it, I have a few more here for you. Okay. So do you ever refit um, your current daily contact lens wearers from other lenses into ProClear? All the time. And very easy and switch to make if they're already kind of buying into the one day uh, philosophy um, and I, I find that the pro clears are just a little better than the other ones so in terms of comfort and vision so um, it's easy to make the switch right and uh, if patients ask can they nap in their lens during the day what do you tell them I don't have a problem with that you know a couple hours closing your eyes is not going to 
kill you, whether it's a one day or any other lens, really. So uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. Right. Um, and in terms of, of the, the ProClear, um, in terms of its comfort, how do you think it stacks up against things like one day AccuView Moist? Uh, very well. I mean, that, of all the one days, that's the one I seem to have the most problem with. So, I mean, that's the easiest one to switch, in my opinion, just because there are some issues with it that I've experienced. But so I think it, you know, compares very favorably to any of the lenses, but that one especially. Right. And uh, huh, interesting question. So you mentioned that you will re refit patients into the lens, but would you refit a patient even if they had no symptoms and are are happy with their current modality? Um, I would ask them. I mean, if are you happy with the lens, or would you like to try something new? And I, the, the ProClears are pretty. As far as the one-days are concerned, they're priced pretty competitively. So, I mean, again, if they're already in one, a one-day lens that maybe want to switch, I mean, I'm, I always given the option, but um, ultimately I leave it in the patient's hands there. Right. And uh, <laughs> question here, something that I don't know too much about, but do you ever use private label products to reduce scripts going online? Um, you know, I have used it for a, a monthly lens. I, I, Occasionally, use a private label lens. Um, it works. There's no doubt. And um, but I haven't used it with the other modalities at all. Right. All right. So I think that's that's going to wind it up because we're just about running out of time. And I do want to do the drawing for the the iPad Mini because now I'm getting a flurry of questions here that people want to actually talk about it. So um, so I guess do you have any sort of um, parting thoughts for us? Any advice that you'd like to give everyone? Well, I, th I think you just got to jump in there and start doing it. If you really, if you really kind of want to do this more in your practice, I mean, you've got to start talking with your patients, and you really got to kind of change your own paradigm about how you present it to patients. If if you're not having a whole lot of success with it, so like I said, that that dollar a day phrase was really a breaking point for me. That that's when I kind of explained it to patients that way, that they the light bulb went on, and um, they were certainly much more open to it after that. So, uh, but just keep plugging away. I mean, that's what these uh, Webinars are for its kind of best practices. So I mean, I'm still kind of on the road. I'd, uh, even at 26%, I'd like to be at higher. So I mean, if if there are ways to do that, and other people have had success with things they're trying, you know, I would love to hear it as well. Great. All right. Well, Jay, thanks so much. And if you'd like to stick around for a little drawing that we're about to do, feel free. If not, okay. feel, feel sure, free sure, to, sure. to come off the line. So let's see what we got going on here. So. I always tell people how I do this, and they always wonder, well, how do you actually pick these things? This is how I pick these things. <laughs> what I like to do is actually look and see who's in the audience and see how many folks we have left, and then draw a number based on the number of people who've stuck it out to the end, because I appreciate people who can see things through. <laughs> so, and of the people who are seeing things through, we have 100, let's just say, whoops, I'm going to count up the number properly. Okay. Sorry. I can't count tonight. 61. And so now I have to run down this list <laughs> and find number 61. I have a list actually of everybody who's here. Of course, it's alphabetized and not numbered. Fantastic. Which makes it so I have to go all the way down. And, and it looks like our winner is going to be Tom Byers. So, Tom, be on the lookout for an email from me um, within the, the next few hours. Uh, and and if for some reason our email doesn't get through and I get stuck in your, your spam filter, feel free to drop us a line at ODWire. So, Jay, thanks so much for being here. And I want to thank Cooper Vision for sponsoring the show tonight. Uh, and I guess I'll see everybody online. All right. Thank you.